So before you can begin sewing, head over to our website, and I'll put the link down in the description box below, where you can print out a copy of your sewing mask instructions, as well as a copy of the sewing pattern you're going to need for this project. The sewing instructions contain information like seam allowance, how big to cut the elastic pieces, where you can get some of your fabric, as well as a disclaimer. Let's get started. So some other materials that you're going to need to complete this project today, aside from your pattern instructions and your pattern, is you're going to need some elastic cording, scissors, sewing pins, an ironing surface, and an iron, as well as some fabric. Now for the masks I just showed you, those are made of 100% quilting cotton fabric. You can also use bandanas that you want to repurpose. Um, I purchased these ones at the local hardware store here. A lot of the drug stores carry these as well as stores like REI, Amazon, and I'll put some in the link in the description box below. Fat quarters work really great for this project if you're a sewer. You can also use and repurpose old scrubs if you have some laying around and you're a healthcare professional. Um, for this pattern, I do suggest using some material that's breathable like 100% cotton. Um, it's gonna work the best. All right, let's get started. So something important to note before you begin sewing is if you are using 100% cotton fabric and or a bandana, you'll wanna make sure that you wash the fabric and put it in the dryer and then iron it. You want to make sure that if the fabric is going to shrink at all and you're removing the sizing that's typically in fabric when it's produced, um, that the shrinking is going to occur before you wash it and not after you've sewn and put your mask together. So here I've already cut out my pattern. And the directions tell you to cut two from the exterior fabric and two from the lining fabric. So I'm just using some fabric scraps that I have today. So I'm going to go ahead, because of this piece that I have is rather large, I'm going to fold it in half. This is just going to make it so I don't have to cut this um, pattern piece out four separate times. Fold the lining fabric in half, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the exterior fabric that you'll see when you're wearing the mask, I'm going to lay that right on top of the lining fabric. Then I'm going to take my pattern piece that I cut out. I'm going to lay that on my fabric. Now I usually lay mine out so that when I cut it I have the least amount of waste possible. And if you're making these masks for a hospital and you're trying to eliminate a lot of waste so you can make more masks, it's a good idea just to try to get the pattern as close to the edge as you possibly can and still cut it out. So lay your pattern piece on your fabric. It's a little trickier to pin when you're pinning through four layers. I don't usually pin a lot for small patterns like this, but I do like to pin a little bit just to make sure that the fabric doesn't shift around. Now if you have a rotary cutter, you can also use that, but just a word of caution with the rotary cutters because they're really sharp and you can't really use um, a ruler when you're cutting these out because of the curves. Just be really, really careful. For this project, I actually prefer scissors, um, but if you do want to use a rotary cutter, just do it at your own discretion and be careful. So grab your scissors, and we're going to go ahead and just cut along the pattern. The seam allowance is actually included in the pattern piece, so there's no need to actually leave the quarter inch seam allowance around the outside. Just cut right up against the paper. This doesn't have to be perfect. You are going to have seams and you're not going to see any of the raw edges. Go ahead and move out of the way, any other scraps that you have. Now you can go ahead and you can remove the pins. 
Now, as stated in the instructions, you are going to want to identify what is the top and what is the bottom of the mask pattern. Um, it is gonna make a difference when you go to put these together. All right, now that we have the tops of our pattern pieces all marked with pins and or marker or chalk pen or whatever you prefer to use, we're gonna go ahead and get our sewing machine threaded and get ready to sew these together. Um, total time it takes me is about 15 minutes to sew one mask. You're also gonna wanna turn your iron on um, I prefer to use no steam when I'm using a uh, cotton fabric, but if you want to use a steam iron, that's fine as well. But you're going to want to turn that on and get that hot. The first thing you're going to do is we're going to sew along these seams and you're going to need to press the seam open. So you're going to want to have your iron hot and ready to go. Okay, we are getting ready to sew these masks together. And before we get started, you're going to want to again, make sure that your iron is on and getting hot and ready to go. Make sure you have thread in your machine that your bobbin is full. And if you have a machine that has the quarter inch foot option, you're gonna wanna go ahead and change that now. Um, if not, a lot of sewing machines come with specialty feet. This is the quarter inch foot for my sewing machine. So you can go ahead and slip that on as well. All right, let's get started. Okay, so we have both of our pattern pieces here. We have the exterior fabric of the mask and the lining fabric of the mask. Both of them have pins indicating the tops from the bottoms. And now we can start sewing. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is put the liner off to the side. You're gonna wanna get your two exterior facing pieces. You're gonna wanna take the fabric, if you have a pattern like I do, and you're gonna wanna take the pattern and you're gonna to wanna to put the correct sides or the right sides together. Now for this, because the pieces are so small, um, you don't have to pin it, you can if you want to, but it isn't really necessary. So starting along the curved edge, you're gonna go ahead and sew a seam from the top to the bottom, a quarter inch all the way down. Make sure to backstitch at the beginning and the end of your pieces. Now when you come to the curve, if you want to, you can kind of lift up your machine just to make sure that your seam is nice and straight. If you're new to sewing, and my pins are kind of in the way here, so I'm just pushing them back so I don't sew over them. Okay, now that I've sewn my seam along the entire curved edge, you're gonna wanna take a pair of scissors or snips and you're gonna wanna ease the seam. Now for this, you're just gonna wanna clip a little bit into the seam. Make sure you stay away from that line of stitching that you just sewed. Now you're gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing to the lining pieces of your mask. So for the lining of this mask, I'm using a batik fabric. So the wrong sides and the right sides look almost exactly the same. So this really won't matter much. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start sewing. Back stitch at the end and cut your threads. And just like you did for the exterior of the mask, you're gonna wanna go ahead and ease the seam. Usually clip about every inch or so. If you have any extra threads, you can trim those as well. Gonna move the pin out of the way, making sure I still leave it in the top. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our iron that we've had heating up and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna iron these seams open. So you're gonna to wanna to take and press these open all the way down from top to bottom on both the exterior as well as the interior. Okay, so by now you should have your lining fabric seamed together and pressed open. 
as well as the exterior fabric seamed together down the center and pressed open as well. Now we're gonna go ahead and assemble the mask. So what you're gonna wanna do is we're gonna put right sides together. Now what that means is you're just gonna wanna put the pretty side of the fabric that you're going to see together next to the other pretty fabric that you're going to see. This is called right sides together. So remember how I said earlier that you need to mark the top of the mask that it was gonna be important when we went to put these together? So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the top of your mask on this side and the top of your mask on your exterior fabric are together. Right sides together or pretty sides together. Make sure that that seam that you made on the front piece and the back match up. Now this is really the only spot on the mask that you really need to pin when you're sewing, but if you're not familiar with sewing, it's not something you do all the time, you're definitely welcome to pin it all the way down to make sure that it doesn't shift while you're sewing. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna sew along the top of the mask and the bottom of the mask. And you're gonna wanna make sure that you leave these edges open. This is how we're gonna turn the mask so you have the pretty sides facing out. So go ahead and finish pinning and then we'll sew along both of those sides. The mask. So there's the top pinned. Now you can go ahead and pin both sides and then sew or you can sew the top and then the bottom. It doesn't really matter. Quarter inch seam. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Now when you're going around the bridge of the nose part of the mask, you're gonna to wanna to take your time here. It can get a bit tricky to sew it. Just go a little bit slower, keeping that quarter inch seam as best you can. Just kind of ease it around the curve, pull out the pins before you sew over them. All right, now we've sewn along around the top. Make sure you line up those seams, again at the bottom of the mask. Pin in the center. And pin along the edges. Make sure those are lined up. Again, if you're worried about these shifting while you're sewing, you can definitely just put as many pins as you want. I don't usually pin these. I'm just, I know there's a lot of people trying to help out healthcare workers right now and sewing these, even if they don't have a huge background in sewing, which by the way, we appreciate everyone that's helping. So there we go, I've pinned all those. Now we're gonna sew along this bottom edge again, leaving this side open and this side open as well back stitching at the beginning and at the end. Now is a good time before we turn this inside out to just go ahead and trim any loose long threads that you have. This just kind of cleans it up a little bit. All right, now that that's done, you can take out the pin. And I always go ahead, this is definitely not necessary, but something that I do again is go around and ease the seam. It's really only necessary around curved edges. So up by the bridge of the nose and on the bottom piece where it's curved a little bit, it will just help it lay open and a lot more flat. But again, if you don't do this, it's not really that big of a deal. So you've sewed the seam on the bottom quarter inch along the top bridge of the nose a quarter inch. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn the mask so the right sides are facing out. So I always start like this and just kind of start wiggling the fabric, forcing it in on itself. It's going to look like a mess during this process, but when you're done, you'll get to see your mask start taking shape.
there you go. Right now, it doesn't look like much, I know. So, so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take these seams right here. And you're gonna wanna kind of open them up a little bit and lay them as flat as you possibly can against each other. And you can use an iron for this. You can kind of just use the heat of your fingers and finger press along the edges. You're gonna kind of just wanna wiggle the fabric, press that seam out as much as you possibly can so you get a nice flat edge. You're gonna do this along the top as well as along the bottom. Now for me personally, um, we're gonna top stitch this so I like to use an iron. All right. So I went ahead and I ironed the seams totally flat. As you can see, it looks so much better. It's already starting to take shape and hold its shape a lot better. So now we're going to, well, you have a couple options here. You can sew a quarter inch seam along the bottom and the top and then do the bridge of the nose, or you can do the bridge of the nose on each side of the seam first and then the top and the bottom. It really doesn't matter. It's really up to you. Um, I found that sewing this, the top and the bottom first seems to be what works best for me, but Either one is fine. Again, um, you're gonna wanna leave the ends open. You're going to want to make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. And we'll go ahead, we'll do the bottom part of the mask. Again, backstitching beginning and the end. All right, we're almost finished. So now we're gonna go ahead, make sure you trim up any of your threads. If you do have a serger, you can serge the ends of the mask as well. I'm trying to just keep this as simple as possible and make this a really doable project for all the great people out there that are trying so desperately to help us healthcare workers out in the hospitals right now. I really appreciate it. All right, now that all my threads are cut, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fold up the edge and press at about a quarter of an inch. So you're gonna do that to both sides of the mask. Fold it about half an inch, give or take. This doesn't have to be precise, but you really just wanna make sure that you're leaving enough room from the side of the mask to the bridge of the nose area that it covers your face. So you can go ahead and give that a finger press and then press that down with your iron. And then go ahead and do the other side the same way. So for this, you can measure if you want to get really specific. I kind of just fold mine over and look at it. Looks about the same. All right, now we have both sides of the mask. Ironed and ready to sew. Now before we sew these, we're gonna go ahead and sew the seam down the bridge of the nose. Now you can just sew down one side, but I prefer to keep everything symmetrical, so I tend to do both sides. So a quarter inch away from the center seam on both sides. Make sure you backstitch or stay stitch at the beginning of each line of stitching. Turn it around. Now you're going to want to sew, again, this part is optional. There's the center seam. There's the seam I just sewed. Now you're going to want to sew about a quarter of an inch away from the center seam on this side as well. All right, we're all trimmed up. Now we're on to the last step. So go ahead and grab your elastic cording. I believe the size of this cording is 5 16 but make sure you check the description box below and I'll have a list of all the things that I used. Now I go ahead and cut these 15 inches. This is leaving quite a bit of room for um, adjustment. And if you're making these for the hospital, um, you don't really know who's going to be wearing them unless you're making them for specific people. So having some wiggle room to adjust them is great. So I went ahead and I cut both pieces of elastic cording 15 inches long and set it 
right in that iron seam that we did. You're gonna take your fabric, fold it over where we ironed it, and this elastic cording should be able to move freely where it's at. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stitch this edge down, back stitching at the beginning and the end just to make sure that it's really secure. Um, another note, when you're sewing these, you're gonna to wanna to be really careful that you don't sew over this elastic cording. You want this to be able to pull through all the way. Um, if the cord happens to break, it could be replaced really easily without the whole mask having to go in the garbage. It up, set that elastic right into that iron seam that we did, fold it over, make sure your elastic is out of the way, and then go ahead and sew this one as well. If these elastic pieces happen to get just pulled out while you're sewing this, um, this cording is pretty small, so it's actually really easy to feed back in there. So don't panic if it happens to get pulled out. There is your completed mask. Um, now before you donate these or give them to a loved one or if you're just making one for yourself, you can get it fitted right now. Otherwise, just make sure you tie these elastic pieces. That way when the person receives it, they can go ahead and adjust it depending on the size. Tie both sides. And that's it. There you have a completed mask.